I think that when you're watching this, you have an interest in ancient history. And if that's the case, and you want to know more about ancient structures, ancient inventions, ancient queens, new archaeological discoveries, or theories surrounding the ancient world, or if you're interested in human evolution, then I suggest you subscribe to this channel. You click that bell icon to be notified whenever I upload. And if you enjoy my work, then maybe consider becoming a Patreon or a channel member. In 2013, bones were discovered in a cave in South Africa, and these bones are from a species of hominid, but they don't really seem to fit in the current human evolutionary timeline. This species has archaic features like their hands, which are perfect for climbing, but they have modern features as well, like their feet, which are perfect for terrestrial terrain. There's been a debate on where to put this species in the human evolutionary timeline ever since it was discovered. And the question is, do they really belong to the Homo genus? Because there are some people who question that. And if they would indeed fall into the Homo genus, then where would they fall into the current proposed human evolutionary timeline? My name is Kaylee, and in this video, I'm going to tell you a quick overview of what I could find out about Homo naledi and their proposed positioning in the current timeline, who their ancestor would be. So first, let's take a quick look at the location of where the bones were found, because it's always important to know where in the world a discovery is made. So the first skeletal remains of Homo naledi were discovered in the Dinaledi chamber, which is a part of the larger rising star cave system approximately 50 kilometers northwest of Johannesburg in South Africa or in Dutch Johannesburg. This area is also known under the name of the cradle of humankind and this area covers a total of 47,000 hectares which equates to approximately 180 square miles. There are about a dozen caves in the limestone in this area and they have their own complex cave systems and this is where some of the oldest fossils in the world have been discovered. Note that I said some of the oldest fossils as this is not the place where the actual oldest fossils of humans and pre-humans have been discovered. To give an example, the Sterkfontein caves at the site has been the place where the fossilized remains of a 2.3 million year old Australopithecus africanus nicknamed Mrs. Ples was discovered. So some people say that the rising star cave system is just outside of the borders of the Cradle of Humankind area and others say that it falls just within the borders of the Cradle of Humankind area. This is not my area of expertise, so I just mention the area and the importance, but it's not for me to say if it does or doesn't fall into the ascribed area. So what I can tell you is that the word Naledi means star in the local Sotho language. This is both a nod to the cave in which it was found, the rising star cave, and a nod to the chamber in which the remains were discovered as well, which is the Dinaledi chamber. So now let's go over the discovery of the bones, because we know the discovery itself holds some clues as well. So as I mentioned at the start of this video, in 2013 the first bones were discovered. So two scouts named Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker, from a team led by paleoanthropologist Lee Berger, were exploring the Rising Star cave system in search for possible interesting finds to report back. I mean, that's sort of what you do. So it was deep inside the Rising Star cave at the Dina Lady chamber where they stumbled upon skeletal remains. On the screen next to me you can see the map of the Rising Star cave system and the part in the yellow marks the Dina Lady chamber. The Dina Lady chamber in which the remains were discovered was already entered in the early 1990s by some cavers who unfortunately did rearrange some of the bones before leaving the chamber and its contents be. It's unclear if these cavers damaged anything, but most of the chamber had not been touched at all before 2013. So these two scouts, Rick and Steven, later returned to the chamber to take photographic evidence of the discovered remains, which they then presented to paleoanthropologist Lee Berger and Pedro Boshoff. 
So the anthropologist then assembled a team, including the two scouts, and started two short expeditions, one in 2013 and another in 2014. And these short expeditions were carried out by very small and lean excavators, as the bones were impossible to get to for a man of normal stature. I mean, if you're big, you're not going to get to them. <laughs> During these two expeditions, the team recovered more than 1,550 bones and teeth of a total of 15 different individuals, most likely six adults and nine juveniles and infants. So the findings of the Dina Lady Chamber were published in 2015 on elifescience.org. What's incredible about the discovery of all these pieces of fossilized remains is that they represent 737 anatomical elements of the body, including parts of the skull, jaw, ribs, teeth, limbs, and more. And this is not only from adults, but juveniles and infants as well. Some nearly complete hands and feet have been discovered as well, which is only more amazing, as this doesn't happen too often, actually. So these remains are from both sexes, male and female, across several age demographics, which makes the find in the Dina Lady Chamber the richest hoard of hominin fossils ever discovered in Africa up until this point in time. It's amongst the Cima de los Huesos collection and the later Neanderthal and modern human collections that this site is the most comprehensive representation of skeletal elements from multiple individuals of both sexes and across their lifespan in the hominin fossil record. So this was quite the find. It's among the greatest of finds of all time, in my personal opinion. The same two scouts, Rick Hunter and Stephen Tucker, that discovered the remains in the Dina Lady Chamber, discovered 131 remains of at least two adults and a juvenile in the nearby Lissetti Chamber as well in 2013, while they were exploring the surroundings of the Dina Lady Chamber and the Rising Star Cave system. Uh, this discovery was published in a separate paper on elifesciences.org in 2017. So now that we know how the remains were discovered, we can look into how old they are and what they tell us about the morphology of Homo naledi. Because I think we all would like to know. At least I do. Do you? So at first, when the fossils were discovered and analyzed, it was thought that they would date to approximately one or two million years old because of the archaic morphology, especially of certain limbs and the hands. But in 2017, the Dina Lady remains were dated using a technology called electron spin resonance, or ESR in short, and they used uranium thorium dating on three teeth, and they also did uranium thorium and paleomagnetic dating on the sediments in which the fossilized remains were discovered. So these methods of dating came back with some staggering results, actually. Instead of the remains dating to a million or two years old, they date from between 335,000 and 236,000 years ago, which is young. <laughs> this baffled the researchers because of the archaic morphology and small sized brains of these hominins. The only hominin similar in the small brain size was Homo floresiensis, and they lived on an isolated island and disappeared shortly after the arrival of modern humans. So it's quite mind-boggling that a species with such small brains were able to survive for so long in the same area as the bigger-brained hominins. And this actually gives weight to the notion that bigger-brained hominins had an advantage in human evolution, which is not necessarily the case, it seems. Which is awesome. Of course, as I've mentioned more than once now on the channel, the discovered fossils and their dates are not necessarily a clear representation of the time span of when the species lived. This is just the age for the discovered fossils. A limited number of fossils in one particular area. So it is of course highly likely that the species of Homo naledi first appeared some two million years ago and evolved into their own speed over time, different than the other ones in the Homo genus because they seem to have not evolved as much or, you know, started to become as different as much. There are some key specimens that helped research the morphology and helped with dating the fossils of the species as well. And I won't name them all by name because <laughs> 
It's a bit too much, but there is a nearly complete hand from an individual known as H1, where only one bone of the hand is missing, which is the pisiform, which is a funny name for a bone, but I mean, that's not it. That's not what this is about. There are numerous cranial paratypes. We have DH1, DH2, DH3, DH4, and DH5. And some of these even have partial mandibles, maxillas, or skull caps as well. And then in the Lassetti chamber, the fossilized remains of a male were found. And this male was nicknamed Neo, which in the Sotho language means gift. And this name is extremely appropriate because this individual has the most relative complete skull of all the Homo naledi individuals discovered. It also showed the researchers the average brain size, which was approximately 560 cubic centimeters, which is very small compared to modern humans with an approximate brain size of 1300 cubic centimeters, nearly three times as small. So at this point in time, the remains of Homo naledi have been placed in the Homo genus. Although there are some debates about this, and this is because of the archaic morphology and the evolutionary mosaic that is found in the morphology of naledi. On one hand, they have many similarities with the other family members in the Homo genus. But on the other hand, there are quite some big differences. So that makes it difficult to place naledi in relation to the other species in the Homo genus. So Homo naledi is not considered to be a direct ancestor of us Homo sapiens or modern humans, whichever you prefer. The researchers have two possible scenarios for the positioning of naledi into the current timeline. So we're going to quickly go over them. Scenario one is that it's possible that Homo naledi branched off at the base of the Homo family, as it has some key features that are primitive and very similar to the early Homo species like Homo habilis and Homo erectus. This would suggest that approximately 2 million years ago, Homo naledi branched off and survived nearly unchanged for a very long period of time, like 1.5 million years approximately of time, which isn't unheard of as we have seen this same thing happen to Homo floresiensis. So we know it's not an impossible scenario and it would actually explain the archaic features in their morphology. And then we have scenario two, which suggests that Homo naledi had a more recent and modern ancestor and that they are more closely related to the archaic Homo sapiens or archaic modern humans, if you will that they branched off from Homo erectus. This scenario gives Homo erectus a more divergent branch on the family tree of the Homo genus. So at this point in time, all known remains belonging to Homo naledi have been discovered only in the Dinaledi and the Lassetti chambers inside the Rising Star cave system. There have been no discoveries of Homo naledi anywhere else at the time of recording this video. Of course, with the lack of fossilized remains from other locations or periods of time, this debate between these two proposed scenarios will probably not get resolved anytime soon. Unless we find more fossils in other locations dating from further back or dating from more recently, we cannot solve this part of the mystery surrounding Homo naledi. So you've heard me mention the strange morphology of Homo naledi a few times now. And you might be wondering, what makes this so strange? And what did Homo naledi look like? Why does she keep going on about this? So what are some of the key features of the appearance of Homo naledi? Well, first of all, I like to quickly mention that some features in the morphology are extremely similar to that of the Australopithecines. Like for instance, the shoulders, the hips, and the torso, while the lower body and teeth and cranium are much more human-like, like us. Then there's the fact that the body of Homo naledi has adapted perfectly for locomotion, while their hands and shoulders are perfect for climbing trees like the Australopithecines. So the species sort of had the best of both worlds or something? The combinations of some of this in the morphology are not known in any other hominin species, which makes them quite unique. So let's take a 
bit of a closer look into the morphology and I'll start with the body size and its shape. Like I just mentioned, the upper body seems quite primitive in its structure. The rib cage was broad, which looks very similar to the rib cage of Australopithecus afarensis. Although Homona lady had an upright stance and bipedal locomotion. The adult males would reach a height of approximately 150 centimeters, which equates to approximately five foot tall, and they would have weighed some 45 kilograms. The females, as you can imagine, were slightly shorter and a bit lighter in their weight, just like we see in modern humans. Unless you're like me and you come from the land of giants and you're on average taller than the average male in America. Hi. I mentioned the brain size earlier in this video, but that was the size of the average male brain, which just to quickly repeat was 560 cubic centimeters. And for the females, it was an average of 465 cubic centimeters. This is just slightly larger than the brain size of, for instance, chimpanzees. Although the structure and the shape of the brain of Homo naledi seem to be much more similar to modern human brains. And even though the modern human brain is nearly three times as large. <laughs> Small brains, yes. The frontal lobe seems to have been most similar to that of Homo sapiens and not similar to that of chimpanzees at all. Homo naledi seems to have had an asymmetrical brain, just like we see in modern humans. So the overall skull shape is unique and we've never seen this particular shape before, although it's mostly similar to that of Homo erectus and Homo habilis, the early Homo species. The skull has a flat midface and narrowing of the skull behind the eye sockets, a well-developed brow ridge, although with a weak arch. The skull lacks the distinctive long and low cranial vaults of Homo erectus and the back of the skull was curved sharply. This is similar to the skulls of us modern humans. The jaws and teeth are consistent with the Homo genus species. The premolar roots have primitive features, although the small sized teeth are more similar to the dimensions of the later Homo species, including us modern humans. Then there are some primitive dental proportions. For example, the third molar is larger than the other molars. And this is actually found in the Australopithecine species, but this is not found in the Homo genus. The incisors are similar to Australopithecines as well, but the canines, the molars and premolars are noticeably smaller and the molar crowns were small with five cusps, just like us modern humans. So the shoulders are primitive looking, mostly similar to that of the Australopithecines and are perfect for climbing and hanging. But the hands are more like those of modern humans, although the fingers looked primitive as they were relatively long and curving, which is again very suitable for climbing. There are some modern features found in the wrists, the palms and the thumbs that make it possible for Homo naledi to have used tools and these features would actually assist in object manipulation as well. So the leg bones were overall long and slender which is very typical of the species in the Homo genus and the leg bones had strong muscle attachments which is typical of modern bipedal walking. So the feet and ankles were similar to modern humans although the toe bones were quite curved. The arches of the feet actually indicate that the feet were very suitable for long distance strides. The pelvis had widely flaring blades, which is very primitive and very similar to the Australopithecines, although the lower part of the pelvis was more like a modern human. Like I said, a mosaic of morphology. <laughs> so what else do we know about Homo naledi? We know for certain that they did not live inside the rising star cave system because even though their fossils were found there, nothing that would suggest occupation was discovered. So no tools, no food and no fire remnants, nothing like that was discovered. So if they weren't discovered in a living site, then what were their remains doing there so deep inside the cave system? The only logical explanation would be that Homo naledi buried their dead, 
because the bones show no signs of being dragged by animals, no teeth marks of animals that would eat their flesh. There's no evidence that the bodies were carried or relocated inside the cave by water or gravity. Nothing like that. So all evidence points to the deliberate placement of the bodies this deep inside this cave system. So it's highly likely and possible that Homo naledi entered the cave with their dead and used the chambers as their final resting place. And if this is the case, then it shows that Homo naledi, with their small brain size, were able to repeat deliberate behavior which signify certain societal bonds. Of course, there are some scholars that believe that in ancient times there must have been a different entrance and the remains had to be washed in, although this is highly unlikely due to the fact that, as you can see here on the map again of the Rising Star Cave system, the two chambers in which the remains are found, one in yellow and I think the other one is in red, uh, they're found quite far apart and there's no immediate connection between the two chambers. So that's quite impossible. <laughs> So if Homo naledi indeed entered the cave on purpose, it is reasonable to assume that they controlled the use of fire because there's no artificial light this deep into the cave's system. Although there's absolutely no evidence for the use of fire in both chambers. Either they only use the fire in the chambers for a very short period of time, leaving no trace of it, or they didn't control fire and they went inside on the use of touch as they wouldn't have been able to see anything. But I feel like if you do that, how the hell would you ha get out? That's very easy to get lost. So I don't believe that. I think they had the use of fire. So the combination of archaic Australopithecine features and later Homo species features makes Homo naledi truly unique in the human evolutionary timeline. It's completely understandable that the scholars have absolutely no clue where to put naledi into the timeline, which species they branched off from and how long ago they evolved. They are an enigma in the evolutionary timeline. Their morphology is an absolute mosaic of a puzzle that seems to be impossible to solve unless we find more pieces. I personally am absolutely fascinated by the species of human, their strange appearance and the overall mystery surrounding them only found in two locations, but without a doubt would have lived in a much larger area. Who were the enigmatic Homo naledi and will we ever discover more about them? That's the question for us to ask and hopefully one day the answer will be revealed. So uh, my sister tagged Lee Berger, Lee Berger uh, on Twitter that I was making this video because apparently she has met him in the past and I might see if in a few months time, I can do an interview with him about Homo naledi. So don't bug him anywhere. I'll do this myself. I'll DM him. And yeah, maybe in a couple months time, we will hear from him about the species that, you know, he helped discover. And everything in this video, all the information that we have sort of comes from him and his team of researchers. So thank you for your hard work. If you enjoyed watching, then don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos, and click that bell icon if you want to be notified whenever I upload. If you haven't seen my previous videos yet, then I'm going to just cry in a corner. But yeah, please click the upper right corner. Please click the card in the upper right corner to stop making me cry. And watch some of my videos or click the links in the description down below. Just like my sources, I always put all of my sources down below. And you can click a video in the end card if you have no idea what to watch because YouTube caters to you with Best for Viewer. I would also like to say a massive thank you to my patrons and my channel members. I'm eternally grateful for all your support. And yeah, this was Homo Naledi, found in the Rising Star Cave system. I'm not going to blab too much because I want this video to be done and premiering already. So have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!